Hello everybody, my name is Will and welcome back to Flyout. Today we're going to be doing something that is a little bit topical at the moment thanks to the YouTube channel Mustard. So I'm sure a lot of you know already what I'm going to be bringing up, uh, mostly by the thumbnail and the title, which you've probably looked at and if you haven't, what are you doing? Click on videos without looking at those. But uh, yeah, uh, basically we're going to be doing a, an oblique wing and if you've not heard of this concept before, um, which I think most people have now after that uh, Mustard video, everyone seems to be watching it. Um, Basically, it's an idea that uh, instead of having the compromise of swept wings being bad at low speeds uh, and then having straight wings being bad at high speeds, instead of using either one or two finding a compromise or having a complicated you know, system where you have variable geometry on your wings or whatever, you, you just take the whole wing and you make the plane like asymmetrical by just move, rotating the entire wing assembly. I I don't know. Um, it's been something that's been tested in a, a couple of real life scenarios. There was there was quite a famous NASA aircraft to do it, which I can't remember the name of for the life of me right now. But um, there were also a couple of concepts uh, throughout history. There there were a couple of you know World War Two ones by the Germans, obviously, because if there's some kind of crazy, somewhat illogical concept, of course the Germans were well on it. Um, and that is somewhat going to be what inspired this build that I'm doing today. Uh, so I was looking a little bit at the BVP-202. This is kind of like a chunkier version of it. It almost looks like if you took uh, like a, a G91 and a MiG-9 and a BVP-202 and, and combined them all. I, I don't really know. Um, but also... With this one, I, I was really struggling to get a feel for it, and I was like, you know what, this really needs to be painted. So, I've actually called in a little bit of help, uh, so thank you very much to uh, Jag Jag from the uh, official Flyout Discord, which is linked in the description of these Flyout videos, um, because they basically just offered to help me design a, a livery for this one, and they did a fantastic job, uh, and you'll see that when we actually take this thing out for a drive. So, thank you very much. That was really greatly appreciated, um, because I am absolutely terrible at coming up with any interesting liveries. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the, the design for this thing is definitely weird. It's super bulbous um, and kind of fat. Uh, it doesn't look very aerodynamic, and for that matter, it's not hugely aerodynamic. Um, the top speed is actually surprisingly good. I really tried to make these engines pretty bad. I wanted it to be along the lines of, like, the just immediately post-World War II kind of era. Um, so, like, 1948 kind of jet engines. The kind of things that you would expect to be going around about the same speed as the propeller planes of the era, just because they hadn't quite got jet engines down yet. But no matter, I've turned the temperature way down, the pressure's way down. Uh, they, they just keeps going, just just keeps getting faster and faster. So it's just kind of pretty quick, uh, and there's not a lot I can do about that. <laughs> but uh, trust me, an effort was made. Um, and I do think in the end this thing looks pretty cool. Uh, at the moment, kind of going to have to trust the process for this one. And you can see me uh, testing out how much I want the wings to tilt there. Uh, apparently something about the efficient angle being 40 degrees, so I decided to go with that. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know if that's the best angle, but uh, that's the one that we ended up with. Uh, initially it was 35 degrees, but then I went for 40. And... Um, the gains from it, obviously, drag is, like, one of the main reasons that you would do this. I must admit, maybe not as impressive as you're maybe thinking, um, but you'll see that when we actually get to fly this thing around. So, there you go. <laughs> um, but we've also got uh, two 30mm cannons in the nose of this thing, which we can use to hopefully take down a couple of target drones today, but uh, there aren't going to be any missile mounts on this thing. Uh, you could probably put them on, like, the side of the fuselage, uh, or you could have a complicated system where the missiles turn at the same angle as the wings, but we don't have either of those on here today uh, because, I, my, in my head, this plane was older than the missiles, so we, we've just gone for the, the old 30mm cannons. They're pretty slow uh, muzzle velocity, pretty slow rate of fire, so kind of thinking of the Mark 108s, uh, or the maybe the 103s, if, if you want to be a little bit closer to the uh, speed of these cannons, because the 108s are they're really slow, and I could not be bothered to uh, <laughs> aim those things in flyouts. Uh, I'm pretty bad, as it is. Um, also, I I've slightly gone lazy, uh, because I'm off... <laughs> 
for a couple days next week, so uh, I had to get this one done, and so we didn't have enough time to get any gear doors on this one. I'm very sorry. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much the finished design, minus the paint job. So uh, let's, let's cut and uh, have a look at that thing when it's fully complete. And voila, here it is, fully painted and ready to fly. And uh, I've got to say, thank you so much for the work you've done, Yag, on the uh, livery. This thing looks incredible. So I'm really excited to take this thing out. We're going to go hopefully shoot down some target drones. I don't know if these 30 mils will be enough to kill tanks. Probably not, but you know what? We might try it. <laughs> Why not? Okie dokie, here we are on the runway, and uh, as you can see, at the moment, it's very much a kind of traditional parasol high wing design. I do actually think this thing would look really cool with some low mount wings on the bottom of this fuselage, but uh, yeah, uh, let's just get into the air and uh, let's demonstrate what it can do here, um, because... You might be slightly impressed with the top speed, given the uh, design looks of it. Um, it's not crazy, it's not going to break the sound barrier, that's for sure. Um, but the goal here is that these uh, this oblique wing will hopefully just tip us a little bit closer to that sound barrier without actually breaking it. So let's uh, just bring in the flaps here. And it seems like we've got a pretty strong crosswind going on, uh, which is causing us to uh, have some... Very unusual flying characteristics, but that's fine. Uh, as we build up some speed, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. But uh, what I'm going to do is, first things first, we're going to fly over to this valley. And uh, we're going to fly as fast as we can with the wings like this. And then we're going to tilt the wings and see if there's any real benefit in this design from doing that. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll catch up with you once we've uh, hit the top speed that I can. Okay, so we've roughly hit our top speed, so about 990 kilometers an hour. Now, uh, bear in mind that there may be other things in play in real life. So if I was to have wings shaped like this in real life, they'd probably fall off at about this speed, which they might not do with the tilted mode. But just based on pure top speed, we're now going to hit the tilt button and uh, we're going to see what kind of benefits we get. So any moment now, there we go, it's going to start rotating and lock into place at 40 degrees. And as you can see, our speed is starting to climb. We do lose a little bit of altitude. But, um, yeah, we've we've cracked a thousand kilometers an hour. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> the gains are approximately 10 kilometers an hour. Let's avoid these trees here. Uh, the gains are approximately 10 kilometers an hour, which is not hugely impressive. I can't lie. But uh, as you can see... It's flying pretty stably, and we can still pull maneuvers without absolutely spinning out. Now, there is a little tiny bit of imbalance in this. Um, I didn't mathematically work out exactly for the center of lift to be in the middle. It's, it's roughly in the middle, but I think it's slightly backwards of center. So now, with this configuration, we have a slight lean uh, where we're going to be rolling left slightly because the, the center of lift is just going to be slightly to the right of the center of mass. Um, but... As you can see, we can kind of just adjust this in flight. So if I go back, we can go right back to the center and then go to the other side as well, which is going to do the exact same thing, just with the opposite roll. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to spawn in a target drone. And in this mode, I think we're going to try and shoot something down. Um, because why not do it in this mode? Uh, we are going to pop one in and it's, of course, flying away from me in the other direction. Okay. Right. <laughs> We're going to really have to work the top speed here and try and catch up with this thing. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll rejoin you once we've got a little bit closer to this fella. And while we're flying, let's just uh, take a moment to just appreciate this paint job. Man, I need to learn how to use the paint schemes in this game. It just oh, it feels so much more complete with a paint job, man. <laughs> oh, I'm in love. Okay, we're closing in on the target drone here. I am going to drop the speed just a little bit, uh, and that hopefully means we won't overshoot quite as quickly, because we're going to need a little bit of time to get the guns on target here. Um, we can try a very distant shot, but I don't think we're going to do anything with it. Uh, these 30 mils, not the easiest things to aim, because they're quite low on the uh, fuselage compared to where the aiming reticle is, but... Uh, Hopefully, we can account for that when we go for this target drone, and I think about now we can probably start opening up with some fair accuracy. Uh, we have got a little bit of instability, but there we go. Got him. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, not too bad at all. Uh, now, I imagine this thing would probably do 
kind of along those lines, probably from above or below. Uh, it would probably be used as a bomber hunter, or alternatively, if you if you made a little divot in the underside here, you could probably carry quite a chunky bomb on this thing. Looks almost like an R2-Y2 if you were to use it like that, to be fair. Um, so maybe, maybe that's a fair use. Uh, should we see if we can shoot down a tank? Shoot down a tank? That's not how it works. Okay, this tank is in an interesting location, I must admit. Um, <laughs> we are actually quite close to the sound barrier here. We're going Mach 0.92 at a l with a little bit of altitude. I think this tank is on the other side of this here uh, cliff. So what we're going to do, we're going to go this way and try and get a little bit of a longer run up so I can get my guns aimed and hopefully these 30 mils are sufficient to go through. But uh, I'm not sure if you can even kill tanks with guns in this game. You might need... Uh, at ground missiles or rockets or whatever um so we will see um but here we go uh there's our fella and we're we're nowhere near we're nowhere near pull up pull up pull up pull up pull up Ooh, okay there we go <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have the wings in this configuration. Uh, just for this. <laughs> just a, l a little bit more lift. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was a little bit nerve-wracking. Okay, take two. Uh-oh, I've selected my wings. No, okay, that that's not even close to working. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, we've dropped our speed a lot more this time. Uh, we're just relying on gravity here. Um, we're going to try and get this guy, but once again, I don't even know if this 30 mil is good enough to do it or if it's even possible. It looks like we've hit him quite a lot, but uh, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Okay, well, fair enough. There we go. Unsuccessful mission. Science completed. You can't gun a tank. <laughs> At least not with these guns. Okay, awesome. Right, let's uh, let's take this thing back to land here, uh, and we'll we'll do this just to get a little bit more speed out of it. Uh, and I imagine we're gonna want to land with the uh, the normal wing configuration, but it's gonna be more fun to land like this. So we'll 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 just give it a shot. Let's say it got stuck mid-flight. <laughs> Okay, landing this thing is a really strange experience with the wings like this because um, the flaps definitely cause some uneven <laughs> lift. So, I mean, this isn't how they're meant to be used, but uh, you know what? It, it, it's more fun this way, right? Uh, maybe we can use the guns to just drain off a little bit of speed here, War Thunder style. Sorry, anyone in that hangar over there. You're probably getting minced by 30 mil right now, but um, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, because obviously we've got a big crosswind as well, this is actually pretty straight on with the runway, as much as it doesn't look it. Um, and any minute now, we should be touching down, and we do have some pretty aggressive brakes on this thing, so we should be good to slow down. And here we go, we're going to touch down probably left wheel first and cause a massive spin. Jesus, that was pretty nasty. <laughs> oh man. Uh, that's not ideal, I must admit. Uh, is there any way I can solve that? No. Uh, maybe if I... <laughs> maybe we put the wheels... Maybe we put the wings back? Maybe? There we go. Oh, God. Uh, a little bit of left steering. Uh, oh, and we've flipped. Ah. Yeah, uh, not my best landing, I've got to admit. <laughs> But if you look at it from this angle, upside down, then it's not too bad. Right? Yeah, I'm sure that's fine. At least, you know, there's some plane for Jimmy to be in this time. He's not just on the ground like he normally is. But, uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this one, please leave a like, comment, and a subscribe. Uh, and if you want to see more stuff like this, uh, I will definitely be doing some more. So, uh, stay tuned, and I will see you in the future for now. Because, uh, yeah, that, that's about all there is for this one. Goodbye! And as always, a huge thanks to this channel's patrons, Ambrose, Camgen, 135, Cody N, DJ Pete, Gavoon, Gamasso929, Sad Cat, Just Casualty 6 and 1, Last Legend 11, Look Under Your Bed, Patch Bits, Mark McN, Officially Mildly Invested, Nicholas K, Rossos Bakken, Ryan Brody, Ryan Brody, The Canadian Emperor, Worth Sickle, Zara Shime, and Zeit Wolverine. Thank you so much for your support.